What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jen and in today's video I'm going to be taking this old handmade step stool and completely transforming it using chalk paint and some stenciling. As you can see, I got this piece at the thrift store and it really didn't cost me too much, but that's because it's got so many issues right now. Let's talk about some of those. First of all, it's barely even held together at this point. You can see this spins, which is terribly bad. It was not terribly built. I mean, whoever did this did a fairly decent job but it's obviously been used and well loved over the years. I am gonna have to plug all of these holes, including the ones on the side. And other than just, you know, some sanding and cleaning and stuff, I think we're ready to get going here. If you guys like furniture flips, furniture refinishing, DIY and faux finishing, then please feel free to subscribe right down below. That's what I do here and I post every week, so I'd love to have you here for our fun adventures. All right, I'm already picking stuff off. It's getting hot out here. I'm definitely ready to just jump in and <laughs> figure out if I can even save this thing. Let's go. I scraped off the price sticker but made a note of the cost. Stick to the end for a total cost breakdown of this step stool. Then I grabbed my degreasing soap, a lint-free rag, and some warm water to give this thing a heavy scrubbing. Not only did it come from the thrift store, but the paint is worn away, revealing a lot of raw wood. For the first time in a while, I'm refinishing a piece of furniture I didn't previously own, so I don't want to skimp on this step. Then I used a lint-free rag to wipe down the piece with some clean water. I did that twice and I left it in the garage to dry. Yeah, that didn't take very long. I used a 150 grit sheet, a squishy old sanding block, and an excess of elbow grease to sand this piece to smooth. I wanted to use my hand sander, but I didn't have any sheets to fit. Plus, it's definitely time to replace my sander. The metal clips barely contain the sanding sheets anymore, but it's about as old as me, so yeah, I can understand why it's struggling. Me too, sander. Me too. I used a second round of soap and water to remove the sanding dust, and I went a little nuts with the clean water cleanup. So I brought it outside and set it in the sun to dry. Once the step stool was free of nastiness and debris, I could turn toward fixing the issues. I got my Ace Brand wood filler and a Japan scraper together. Then I started filling some of the holes, but I quickly realized this thing was pretty jacked up. So I coated the entire step stool in wood filler.
do the same thing on the edges. Actually, before I even do that, let's tighten up some screws. my 220 grit, folding it over and just going crazy here. This helps so that the paper doesn't slide around, it'll stick to its grit. All right, let's see what we can do. And everything dried pretty quickly here, so I could get going on smoothing out this first layer. It took about eight minutes to get everything smoothed down. Ta -da, right. All right. And I could see that I'd need a second coat in some areas that had a deeper divot. I couldn't wait to get this step stool painted. I'm using this chalked paint from Rust-Oleum in the color charcoal with a one and a half inch angled purdy to apply it. I started with the piece upside down. I'm not planning on more than one coat on the underside, but this way I can reach all those areas without having to twist into positions that this middle-aged bod just can't handle anymore. Once the feet were dry, I flipped the piece and gave the top a thin but solid first coat. I waited about an hour and came back to apply the second coat. I'm not disappointed with the coverage of this paint and I've used it a bunch of times before, but I forgot that it doesn't self-level. She's a little lumpy bumpy from the brush. I don't mind that look though, plus I know my top coat will fill some of those valleys. But if you don't dig brush marks, I suggest a light sanding and wiping down between coats. Or try thinning the paint with a bit of water. I went with full strength on both coats here. All right, you're recording, right? All right, we're using a damp sea sponge, slightly dampened sea sponge. I'm going to use Castle. And Maui sand mixed together randomly to make a nice thing. Yeah, to make to make a nice thing and <laughs> to stencil this. And I've got a couple paint brushes just in case 
I'm also going to use my Stencilies spray adhesive. This is a repositionable kind. That way, hopefully, I can get this to stick down so these teeny little thin areas don't get bleed under, or at least not as much. But it's really hot, so I'm getting going here. Despite my better judgment, I chose doing this in the garage temps over having spray adhesive all over my floor. Trust me when I tell you, this was a tougher choice than it should have been. With the stencil lined up and pressed into place, I added some paint to a plate and then daubed into it with the sponge. Then, using a random, soft, pouncing motion, I added the lighter color to the stencil area. I did the same with the mid-tone, but tried to work quickly so I could blend the colors together a bit, giving the appearance of highlight and shadow while filling in the entire block. Let's pull it and see what happens. Ah, oh, yeah, she's not bad at all. Chalk paint dries really fast here, so things were dry enough to reposition the stencil right away. I lined it up to fill the empty areas, being very careful not to rip these thin bits. And I did this to both sides, but filming angles made it challenging to get into some of the areas, so I did the rest of this off camera. Back in the gloriousness of air conditioning, I grabbed my Rust-Oleum and an artist brush, then touched up a few areas of bleed under. I want to keep the matte finish of this paint, but also fully protect this step stool. I'm vertically challenged, so this thing is going to get a lot of use. <laughs> I gave it two coats of my favorite dead flat varnish top coat by Modern Masters. I'm using a Fitch brush to apply this, and I apologize, but this brush is also as old as my gray hairs. So I don't know if these Ralph Lauren brushes are available anywhere anymore. You might be able to find them on eBay, but pretty much any Fitch brush will do the same job. The brush made quick work of this top coat, and with that done, so was the makeover on this thrift store step stool. Okay, so let's talk costs. I spent $3.80 on this step stool, including tax. The Rust-Oleum paint is about 73 cents per ounce, and I used maybe a half ounce to do this whole step stool. Total cost for that would come in at about 27 cents. The stencil came in a four pack and each work out to about $3.25, but considering I can use this again and again, that cost would lessen over time. The Folk Art chalk paint breaks down to about $5 per jar. Again, I used a fraction of an ounce here, but a half ounce would come in at about 32 cents. So all told, I'm about $7.64 in on this piece. Don't forget to subscribe before you go and hit the bell for notifications.
give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And leave me a comment what you think about this piece, how you think it turned out. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Later, peeps. What a mess. That's gonna take a lot of sanding. It's getting hot out here already. Don't know how I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna try. It's gonna be the cleanest piece in our house because I have to use RO water while Matt's in the shower. <laughs> so... With the stencil lined up and pressed into place, I plopped a bit of paint. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's do that again.